Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the SUP podcast. I am one of your hosts, Lawrence Deloach. And with me, I have my good guy, two guy co host. One of them is Chris Chini. What is this character? Hi, everybody. Man, shut the fuck up and just say hello to the hello, Hey, guys. Hi. Thank you. Jesus fucking Christ. And then I, I, the other person on the podcast is Luke Show VC. Hello, Lawrence. Good to see you again. Hey, very good to hear from both of you guys. I am excited about 2021. <laughs> it is going to be a wonderful year for everyone involved. Uh, let's continue to make more memories. And <laughs> man, fuck that. Yo, just talk like a normal person. Yo, it's 2021. I'm excited, guys, <laughs> to be here with you guys. New year, uh, new stuff, uh, do things to talk about. We're still in the pandemic, but um, let's just kind of like already get right into it, man. We uh, It was a rough 2020, um, but we got 2021 here. What what do we want to see this year, man? Like, and not just from this podcast, but in general, whether it's sneaker copping, you know, whatever. Talk to me, Luke. What do you want to see this year, bro? Oh, I want to see. We already got the the preview last year, but I really want to see my uh, the Nike Bayou dunks. That's all I want to see this year. I want to be able to customize and figure out what kind of weird colorways I can use for some dunks. I'm down for it. Well, uh, just not to throw a monkey wrench in your plans, but if dunks were anything like 2020 and you think that you're going to be able to just willy nilly create your own dunk in 2021 without it being a complete shit show, I, I'm glad. Why are you shitting you, on my dreams already? I'm not shitting on your dreams, bro. <laughs> I'm just being a realist, yo. It's Dunks were so uh, hard to obtain in 2020. And I see that, you know, I feel like Nike's going to try to continue that trend in 2021. But I definitely agree with you. Let's make dunks more obtainable. Uh, Chris, what do you want to see in 2021, man? A lot of brands had a lot of time to think during 2020 because there was a time where they couldn't move forward. A lot of projects, a lot of factory issues here and there. Can't even go outside. I want to see a lot of good storytelling this year. There's been enough gap in time where they were just sitting on their ass and just thinking about different projects here and there. I want them to all do what Concepts does with every major project they do and just do good execution, good packaging, and good storytelling. That's what I'm hoping for. That's for, for a lot of release. Yeah. I, I, I definitely respect that, man. That's a, that's That that was a Concepts, Union. Those guys told a great story, even to a certain extent, uh, even though I didn't really like that, the final product. Bodega told a wonderful story with their stuff. Yep. Um, yep. You know, you know uh, what was it? Uh, who did the, the New Balance collab? Um, ALD? Uh, ALD. <laughs> Uh, oh yes, did, yes, yes, yeah. They did some. Yeah, I think when you, especially when you're referring to collaborations, I think that's you know that's a major thing. Great storytelling. What do you think? Yeah, what do you want? Uh, what I honestly, there's two things I want, and hopefully, you know, I get them. I want those. Uh, if, if that's going to be the final product of the Mars Yards 2.5, so even with the black toe, <laughs> uh, I want those, man. I, I learned my lesson last time three years ago from you know not copying when I should have even at resale. I definitely want those for 2021. I need a, I need a Tom Sachs in my life. And the other thing I want to see is fucking Utopia, man. I want to see Trav drop Utopia, Ooh. man. This, is, this was uh, 2020, they said, was the first year that he didn't drop a project. Yeah, project. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm, as, a, as a guy who truly, uh, I, I enjoy Travis Scott's music and shit, I, you know, I hope that we see less brand chilling out of him. A lot of brand hawking that he was doing in 2020, whether it was McDonald's or, or you know, Fortnite. I know you know it's a pandemic, so dudes is making their money. But I want to see more music from Trav. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see Utopia, uh, and I want to see uh, more. I guess Nike collabs with Trav because <laughs> we saw we saw what he what he was working with. Uh, what New Year's or New Year's Eve or a couple of days ago. Uh, oh, yeah. like the UNC version, I guess, of his dunk. Uh, it was, no, it was it was UNC Jordan One, I believe. The Jordan One, yeah, those Jordan Ones, yeah, are, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the reverse swoosh, that, those are his. That's what I'm. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. We, oh yeah, they, yeah, were, yeah. they weren't a dunk. They were. Uh, it was a unreleased Jordan Low. Oh yes, excuse yeah. me, sorry, I misspoke. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. I mean, okay. 
No, I just, uh, I mean, if this is going to be, he's going to do this for a while if he's just going to hit all the major colorways, you know what I mean? So I think you're going to get exactly what you want, Lawrence. Well, what I think, what I think also we're getting from Trav is we're just getting the, the, uh, that Nike realizes that Trav can pretty much any silhouette he, he touches, then people start kind of gravitating towards it. And, and we're seeing it again with the Jordan one low. I know he did Jordan one low, uh, you know, uh, last year for his, uh, well, 2019, but for the mochas, yeah, for the, you know, for the mochas, but we're getting a, a Trav one. Oh, we may not even get it, but we're seeing a Travis Scott Jordan one low. And, you know, we, we know that people gravitate towards the, the highs, and even people were fuck are starting to you know, people get excited about mids. I know you know they're not the most beautiful, like you know, model or silhouette <laughs> portion to me. But if we're getting we're getting Jordan one lows from Trav, then I, I'm excited. I'm here for it. You know, we, we don't have uh, we don't have Jerry Lorenzo on Nike, so you know Nike's got to continue to push a Trav model out in 2021. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you guys What are you guys thoughts on that? You, you know, seeing that. I'm tired already, man. <laughs> yeah, my uh, yo, I'm Mary Luke. I'm like cool, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, if like I like you know how I mentioned, like if they're just gonna hit like every major colorway, like mm-hmm. I don't know like what exactly they're basing that off of, but it's you know it falls within that lineage of like UNC type of colors. It's mm-hmm. yeah, it's the obsidian. It's it's based on the obsidian Jordan ones. Like if you look at those, they're like one to one. I think. Hold on. It, yeah. So like cool. I mean, like, I think for people sort of like us who have more independent thoughts around like these types of things, like, I think we're, t- I mean, like, you're looking more forward to it, which is like cool. I think maybe you, you probably want like other things though, right? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, this is not, I mean, that, that is far from, that is far from a, um, a want, you know what I'm saying? Because yes. It's not like, oh, these are must have. I, I think there's other things that I, you know, obviously, I'm trying to not buy as many sneakers, you know, this year as I've done in the past, like, you know, two, three years, but you know, once again, those aren't a, I need to have those. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that if I, if I get my hands on them, I don't know. I think those are, those are a feed a family pair. Those, yeah. those are, you get them and then you, and then you sell them so you can feed your family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> feed a family pair. I family. feel like, I feel like, I, so like I said, like more, people with us, like more independent thoughts. Mm-hmm. I'm not even a reseller like that. Like if I'm selling anything, it's on Poshmark used, you know what I mean? But like, mm-hmm. I'm looking at those, like, I, I thought you like exactly what Luke said. If I get my hands on them, I'll feed my family. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. I might, if I get them realistically, I'll probably just try to trade them for strange loves from last year. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Oh man, the old the old strange love. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I but I, I understand. I mean, but who's to say? I mean, we know how some you know we we see something like that, and who's to say we even get that pair or we get a pair? But you know, I, I based on you know how Nike understands how Travis is a, a cash cow, and I'm sure that we're gonna get some type of Travis Scott Jordan Nike collab in 2021. So I am here for it. I'm I'm more here for Utopia. But um, yeah, let's you know what. Let's hopefully let's let's move the needle and not talk about Trav as much. I don't. I, I only thing I want to hear from Trav is fucking music. That's it. <laughs> well, why don't yeah. we move the needle to January fourteenth? I believe, uh, which is Dunk Day. Speaking of dunks, we can have some regular dunks. There's like five mm-hmm. coming out that day. Mm-hmm. Um, all gonna sell like hotcakes. Oh, yep. <clears throat> Um, I actually am kind of down with both of those highs. I mean, the yeah. fourth one, like the gray white one, I, I'm like on a solid tip of just wanting like one color sneakers now, which is crazy. But so like, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go for it. Go, go. For the listeners out there who aren't watching, there's five colorways. Uh, there's a, a what a UNC ish colorway, yeah, uh, UNC uh, white and UNC blue low. There's a UNLV, um, low which also you know they just did what like a year ago year and a half ago with the off-white uh dunks right uh then there's also a um a white and black colorway which is very simplistic very simple very clean uh then we have two highs which well chris you want to help me out with these colors what because you're more of the they're white and gray right yeah that one's just like a regular white and gray and then the next one i would call like a 
vintage cream and blue. Yeah, it looks like a like a light purple, kind of what Supreme would call a light purple, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or yeah. like and a cream. I like those. I like the light cream and, and purple ones. I think the uh, the black and white one is probably going to be like the, the winner winner chicken dinner here. Just because also if you missed out on the ambush, this is like your replacement. And then it, this just is just going to go with everything. So that seems that's if I was going to go for one uh, for resale purposes, I'd probably go with that one. Although the red one seems like it's getting a lot of hype, uh, even though it was it was sort of just out last year, like you said, Lawrence. But those two seem to be the, the ones. Yeah. I don't know. This blue one with like this one has like a, with the yellow hit on the tongue kind of reminds me of like it's another like kind of Homer homage to the SBs. I like that a lot. And that UNC color is nice, too. That's probably my favorite. What I'm what I will say is Nike is definitely the masters of um, of continuing the hype. Uh, for hopefully, you know, with five pairs releasing you know, there, there is some obtainability for, for people because this has been something that everyone's been complaining about in 2020 where it's like, like, you know, you cannot grab a dunk for retail. And I, you know, I was actually, I was actually on, um, I was on Nike talk maybe a couple of weeks ago and someone had asked, they just was like, you know, that now 2020 is closed and they want to see what were people's uh, retail hits on dunks, you know, and I mean, people were literally like, I got nothing for retail. I got nothing. Wow. Like, I had to pay retail, you know, and I think that's something that hopefully uh, with five pairs releasing, I think hopefully we, we do see some people hit, you know, on retail for it. You know, these are, you know, your, your standard general dunks. I definitely want to see people win. Yeah, for yeah. sure. This should be a win culture, not a lose culture, you know? It should be, but I mean that that's something I think that also, you know, we gotta change in 2021. We got it Nike sneakers and and you know and retail like there should not be, I mean, granted, I understand there's more demand than you know product, but people should not be, you know, oh for 50 on sneakers for the year. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah, and we also shouldn't be looking for like the the hottest bootlegs in order to fulfill that craving. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's why twenty twenty was a big. I mean, Warren Lotus, of course, was obviously a huge controversial thing, but because that was a catalyst for everyone to talk about the other bootlegs, and those became like this like weird cultural phenomenon where it was like kind of cool, but it kind of wasn't. But it was basically because we couldn't get the shoes we wanted. That was the whole problem, right? And I, uh, we're starting to see kind of the market flood with the dunks but not only with that like we're starting to see other brands kind of emerge as like new kind of hype like mediums i guess so like hype hype mobiles when you got like uh you got new balance just putting out the 550s like we got we got announced that there's gonna be like a bunch of 550 colorways this year mm -hmm. we have um you know we have what's going on over at adidas with the easy stuff so there's constantly like there's move there's like new engines coming in where basically Nike is not going to be the like only game in town in 2021 where I think that the attitude might start shifting because people are talking about it. People are kind of like, I am sick of all of this bullshit that we're going through. And hopefully if the attitude kind of changes and there's more dunks coming out and, and like there's more releases coming out, we'll see resale prices drop where it's not even going to be worth it. Kind of like what we're seeing with the PlayStation 5s where it's not even worth it to even try to resell them anymore because everybody's like, we're going to get more, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not a, that's a, that's a limited uh, quantity, but it's not a limited release. Like they're going to keep making PS fives. Right. <clears throat> so we're definitely seeing a little bit of an attitude change. Yeah. And, no, keep going. Luke. go. And also like we're seeing, you know, our, our number one favorite bootleg brand that everybody loves to talk about. Bape coming up with, uh, coming up with their own versions of uh, Jordans and uh, skate shoes. But are, are we are we calling Babe's bootlegs though? Like because Babe, Babe has been like it's not like a to me, it's not like a Warren Lotus type of situation, like where Nike's like we're put like Babe has been around right, you know, for years where it, it's it hasn't been, you know, they you know, Nike hasn't been like we're gonna sue the fuck out of Babe. You know what I'm saying? And now Babe is to me. Like they're like, fuck it. We're just gonna create a Jordan One model. We're gonna create a dunk looking model. Yeah, it was always I, Air Force Ones. I I honestly believe going forward that this dunk Air Force One shit 
in Jordan one is like going to be referenced with uh, like counterfeiting stuff moving forward. Once this reaches, once like this becomes like normalized and okay, and we're not like in shock and they fully get away with it. It's going to be so hard to argue like counter, like I don't even know how to describe like doing what Warren Lotus did. Right. Where you kind of do like this off brand, not really Nike, not really Bape kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Cause how are you going to say no when you have all these examples of people getting away with it? Yeah. I, it's, it's honestly the only thing that's holding the only thing. Cause like what Lauren said is true is it's, 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 it's the history behind Bape is what's holding like kind of holding the whole thing together yeah. because they've kind of been known for like, <clears throat> even like, even if you look at like close up on, on these, cause like I'm looking at the courts does right now, which are basically an air Jordan one in like kind of that shadow color way. But the biggest takeaway is that they have like the kind of the ABC camo engraving throughout the entire sneaker, which is interesting. It's, mm-hmm. it's enough for me to go. Yeah. This is a different sneaker. This is bait putting their own twist on the, and the Jordan one. I'm okay with that. You know, uh, I think that's enough of a difference where we'll they'll get away with it legally. And also, it's just uh, it's it's good. Uh, I can't wait for it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get a pair. I'm a little aged out of this, but I respect the move. Lawrence, I don't how know how you, you feel. I, I, be, okay. I can only wear bait when there's uh, age appropriate things attached to it now. I think. I don't know, man, because you remember you were he you were there for it. You were there for all of this. I was. So I, I feel like you're fine. If you wanted to get a pair, you're more than able more than more than able to. I could. I mean, I referenced this on another another episode, but like wearing the Bapes does was the flex because everyone knew they were the same shoe as an Air Force One, but they were just two hundred dollars more, right? Right. That flex is different now. Yeah. It's not the same, especially with these colors. Mm-hmm. Actually, it, wait, go, go, Lawrence. No, 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 no. Go, go ahead, Chris. Finish your thought, man. No, because what I was going to say, like, because before we were also getting Bapesters in colors that Nike would never do. Like, the color blocking on Bapesters mm-hmm. was so young and loud that, like, that was also its own separate flex where it's just like, oh, those are not Air Force Ones. Like, from a distance, you didn't even need to see the star. With these, these are literally, like you said, like the shadows. You yeah. know what I mean? And, Lawrence, I, I don't know where you were going to go with your point, but I'm sure you can kind of contest with me that, like, I'd rather wear the shadows than these. Yeah, I was what I was going to say is, uh, and I just remember that Bate was doing things that, like you said, Nike would not do. And in terms of colorways, in terms of materials, I mean, patent leather, you know, there was certain, you know, and, and I think there was more of a uh, an acceptance of wearing Bape sneakers, because like you said, Chris, I mean, I think I was paying probably like $200 for a pair of Bapes in 2004. 2005 I just remember lining up at the Bape store on a Saturday morning for Bapes and I and I can remember when they did a collab with X-Men they had like the invisible you know they had a uh, Cyclops and they had all yep. these different yep. and and I I just remember like being so excited to get a pair of Bapes and and I think that that kind of like changed to me like in a, and maybe in a and like three four years later where it became like it was like okay that bait wave to me was over and 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 i don't know if, if in 2021 i i i feel the same i do agree with you on that where it's like ah i like them but i don't know if it's something that lawrence delos is gonna say yeah i need a fucking pair of bait dunks yeah you understand what i'm saying whereas in 2005 i'm like oh shit like i gotta have these I have to like, you know, what I mean? and I think that's where I, I, I Chris, I, I understand what you're saying with the, yeah, it's age appropriate. I'm not, you know, I, I do get what you're saying, but at the same time, those, those gray and purple bait dunks are fucking flames to me. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what? I'll level with you, Luke. Yeah. If they do these in it, actually, cause you know, the piping on these is crazy. So we're still looking at different. Um, yeah. So you know, bait models. This- yeah, the one that I'm looking at right now is the courts. The the one I pulled up right now is the Skatesta, which is the other model that they're putting out, which I, I believe is a re-release, actually. So what I'll tell you is like if they pay homage to the old Bapesta colorways, yeah, I think that's a way for me to go. Yeah, I could do that. Like 
So if they're going to do the courts or the skates to in like, you know, one like the first colorway as they did of. Well, I'm seeing a con. I'm seeing the Kanye colors on one of these skates. Does already yes, you are. And I did not notice those before. Yeah, dude. If I see if I get to see skates does with Kanye with the Kanye bear colorways. Yeah, I'm going to get those immediately. Obviously. Um, the other thing is just like it's it's still Bape is still like that counterculture because Gentry refuses to give us the shoes that we want. He's not going to give us the original Michael Jordan shoes. Yo, why are you stealing <laughs> Lawrence's quotes right now? I'm nah, just he, nah, he ain't stealing, but I, 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 I agree with you on that. But I, I, I don't know. I think they're just like these have different a different audience, a different core of people that go for Bapes versus mm-hmm. uh, Nikes at this point. And I think, and it's, I, I, it's I, true. But I, I, I agree with you on that. The, the, uh, the audience is much different than it, than it used to be. It, yeah. it, 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 it was, it, you know, you know, what's funny. Cause I, you know, I hate, I don't, I don't always say that rappers are the, the trendsetters, but at times they, they definitely can be. And when bait was like piping hot, motherfuckers was wearing bait sneakers left and right. You oh, saw yeah. Kanye, you saw Pharrell, you saw, you Lil know, Wayne. all you saw Lil Wayne, the clips, you saw all these rappers and influential people wearing bait. And it was like, oh man, I gotta have bait. And now we're 15 years later and what influential rapper is bait? wearing bait? Right. Like even to the point, what influential NBA player? Everyone who has some sort of influence either has their own deal with like Adidas or, you know, obviously, you know, Jordan and Nike. So Bape isn't as hot as it once was, you know, but at the same true. time, go no, ahead. Go, go, go. no, you go, go finish your thought. At the same time, I, I definitely, I, I feel like Bape was built and designed on taking what Nike did and and doing their own thing and somehow got away with it no no lawsuits no you know we all looked at it like god damn this is a fucking carbon copy of a air force one but even today it's like oh they doing a jordan one okay they're doing a dunk all right well whatever i guess you know <laughs> yeah it, yeah it is i was gonna is. i was gonna mention because you re- you mentioned that nobody's wearing it anymore and i don't know if you guys saw just as a quick side note the drink champs that pharrell did they asked him like yo why don't you wear bape anymore and he was like oh because my friend sold it yeah like, Nigo friend, sold it. yeah Nigo, mm-hmm. he was like i'm not wearing that shit if my friend's not running that he still he'll still wear a human made though yeah because like, that's nigo nigo's brand nigo's like of doing some, his, his own stuff right now which you know as start talking about 2021 stuff i'm trying to see what he has in store for human made. Yeah. Which that's, that's also, and you know what? And I was going to admit, that's also a huge thing, bro. Nigo isn't behind it anymore. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like when Nigo was there, it, it, like you said, it, it definitely had a different feel, a little bit more coolness to it, but also it was just a different era type of thing. I mean, you look at that era, you know, there was, you know, uh, I forgot the, uh, they were a skate shoe that everyone used to wear. It started with an S I believe. Uh, uh, not sutra, supras, supras. Oh, oh supras. I remember. Yeah, I, <laughs> oh, wow, shit. I didn't. Th- I didn't know where you were going with that. I didn't think. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is that era. You know, there was. I mean, there was a a a, a G. I mean, we're talking when Bapes were hot. It was Bape, G Shock, yeah. Supras. Even the, the shits Kanye used to wear the uh, Atu Matasamos or some yes. Ato yeah. Matas Mosusamis or some shit. I remember I was yes, fucking the, the Kawasaki to... Suzumis. Yes, <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm. I mean, but I'm just saying there there was a different, and I think now we're in that era of just you know if you if you want to have the quote unquote status shit as a streetwear footwear you're gonna have some like dope nikes yeah yeah and you know what you know what's crazy though too so the the supra era and the bape era overlap because of little wayne yes so it does go back to whatever that because that at that point little wayne was smoking hot like dude there was nobody that could touch him and arguably all of the songs like weren't that great he was just so hot similarly the way travis is now 
right? So you can see the parallel of just like people, whatever that dude's wearing, and that's what's going to happen. Because that's the only way, Lawrence, I never even thought you would even know the name Supra. <laughs> I, dude, I, I had Supras. I mean, I used, to try, I used to get into clubs wearing Supras, bro. Yeah, like, that's crazy. That's how, yeah, bro. Like, it was, it was a big thing. Like, but what I'm saying is that era that, you know, you, were you like you said, we're, you know, from like, you know, old, old three to old seven or oh six you you know base were like so hot and then like you said oh seven through oh nine or whatever supers were like the thing yeah and i and, and once again i mean babe is still here but it's a it's just it stood the test of time yes but i mean you're not going to be like oh shit like i gotta you know i was i would never stand online i mean and, and granted the last time i even have been to the big shop I think was in 2016 when they did the Bape NMD collab, but I think that was because Bape and uh, Adidas, yeah. Adidas mm-hmm. was like fucking hottest fish grease. And <laughs> but other than that, dude, no, I mean, but I'm I'm just saying, it like it's yeah, it, it was. So um, I I don't know, I I like them, but yeah, let's definitely um, I don't know, temper expectations. <laughs> yeah, I want to see what they do with them. If they if they do some like homage shit to the old shit, I might get away with it. But also like, I'm kind of with Pharrell, and I'll go with Human Made. But it depends. I don't know. I don't really want to commit one way or another. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing a shadow colorway. I mean, goddamn, I'm sure they're gonna fucking hit us with a Chicago colorway. Oh, fucking- dude, it. I'll go. <laughs> and if yo, if they do some like deconstructed version where it's like the Virgil Ablo bait. Chicago, I'm gonna lose it. I'm just gonna be like, what's happening here? Can we uh, can oh, have an original no. idea at some point? Because like this Mike, is getting out of hand. Can you sue them? Can you sue them? Yes, that's what I'm saying. So. <laughs> what I else mean, we got going on, fellas? What else we got? Well, I was gonna say, you know, off the off the back of Nike too. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this tweet, and I don't know how true it is. Um, just people like doing their own shit based off Nikes. I mean, there was a tweet about Kobe Bryant. He wanted to leave a few weeks. He said this to somebody a few weeks before he passed. He wanted to leave Nike and start his own company called Mamba. Where I yeah. guess it would be like a player owned sort of kind of like what Ewing tried to do maybe along with like Shaq and any of the other guys like Starberry that stepped away from their generic uh, deals that you can get with these companies and start your own. Mm-hmm. Um, he's saying this guy's saying he's going to it was going to eclipse his sports career, but I don't think this guy remembers what how he played because that's hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's you could argue that the Jordan brand still didn't overtake what Jordan did on the court. You know what I mean? So I don't, that that's a bold ass statement. But I also just hate when somebody says something after someone's died. That it's so annoying. Like just let it go, dude. It didn't happen. Like you don't need to speculate. Like you don't know what was going through the his mind at the time. You don't know what was go- whatever. But anyway, I just want to hear you guys' thoughts on maybe what you thought what was going on here. I don't. I don't know, man. It's uh, yeah. I would have liked to see it. I, I don't, you know, it's, there's not really much we could do with it. Right. It's just uh it's just a sad piece of information. Yeah. Cause it's like, was he going to like redo Kobe's? Oh yeah, probably. You know, like, uh, would he, would he have made the, like the tweaks maybe he would have at like with his brain and like, you know, how he played basketball with like, Oh, maybe we got to make the heel like this. I, I don't know. It's just I such a it weird thought. Been more of a contracting thing, like how players are paid out. I think it would have just been different, and I think it would have just helped the players a little bit more. Um. Well, first, uh, you know, I just want to say, uh, rest in peace, Black Mamba. This is uh, yes, rest in peace. We're, we're we're literally three weeks away from the uh, the the horrible uh, anniversary of of his death, which is so crazy to me how how fast you know time flies but um it it it, to me you know i hate when people like you said i hate when people do that where they you know like you said oh he was gonna do this you know we don't know you hear it so often with so many um amazing uh influential people who have passed away i hear it with biggie all the time biggie was gonna leave bad boy and 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 start and you know he was gonna do this and you know and Pac was gonna do this and you don't know. Yeah. Um, what I will say is, unfortunately, we, we do hear this so often with uh, Nike where, you know, people do complain about, you know, we hear it with, you know, Kanye and, and Lorenzo and all these guys who have worked with Nike. 
um, that, you know, sometimes they, they, you know, it just, it is the greatest of, of business deals or whatever. It doesn't make them happy. Uh, but who's to say that, you know, I mean, people take meetings all the time. Yeah. yeah. You understand what I'm saying? People take pitch meetings. Um, but do we know if, if Kobe was going to truly leave? Um, no. Granted, his his line, you know, at, but prior to his death, it, it wasn't. I mean, I remember pro trolls were sitting in foot lockers, you know, prior to his death. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't know, maybe he wasn't happy with the way, you know, he was being marketed as a Nike athlete. But with that being said, um, I still think, you know, I, I still think, I, once again, I don't know, but I think, I think Kobe probably, you know, he probably would have stuck it out with the swoosh. I, I just feel that. Yeah, let's not forget. Of, a lot of the time. Yeah. Oh, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. I mean, you know, I mean, remember he what what happened in Colorado with him. You remember he he kind of, you know, it took him a little time to get his own model again. You know, once that Colorado incident took place in what uh, I think, oh, three to 2003 or whatever. He didn't get it. Remember, he didn't get his own Kobe model until I think 2006, a couple years later. And what I'm saying is, you know, he built a lot, a big legacy with that brand. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's possible for him to leave. Yeah, it is. But I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like stuff like this, it, it a lot of it, and, and I hate to say it, sometimes it, it, it he, whoever leaked that, it probably leaked it on some, all right, we can get our brand, uh, people to look at our brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there was that, like... See, I don't know if these are fake or real. I'm I don't, I'm just not going to take screenshots seriously anymore, especially after this year. But, like, he said there was, like, that meeting, and then he had the screenshot of, like, the, the supposed shoe, this you one? know? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's hard, especially, like, because Kobe's had some misses as far as shoes, especially, like, I think the famous one is the toaster with the Adidas, you know what I mean? So, like, looking at this, doesn't even look like a good shoe. You know what I mean? Like, I could make this in an hour. And then this, just as this guy is verified... You know what I mean? He's like, he makes a fake meaning post, posts that and goes like, he was going to leave Nike like that. I mean, people will believe it, but I don't know, man. Also, don't forget a lot of these, like, that's kind of how you do business in Hollywood. And like, when you're dealing with like a lot of money is sometimes you'll, you'll pretend that you're doing this other project. You'll say you're doing this other project and then you'll bring it to Nike and say like, Hey, just give me my own, like maybe instead of a, a Kobe shoe, just give me a Mamba shoe and like, give me my own Mamba line. You know, a lot of times this is just like a bargaining chip so they could get what they want with the company that they're at. Mm -hmm. so it's, yeah, it's like that was another thought that came pa past my mind is like, you know, it, it could be all bullshit. Yeah, but also the other thing, too, is like how how would we think Nike wouldn't just give him his own line? Like like he's such a his monster shoes force. On, his shoes were sitting on the shelf. Remember? <laughs> yes. No, but I mean, as a legacy player after he retired, there's no way I would I would imagine that Kobe would go to Nike and go like, yo, let me get my own line, at least start small. You know what I mean? I can't imagine a world where they would say no. Well, here's my thing. How many retired players still had a a line with Nike, if that makes sense? Like who still have, you know, sneakers being Kobe and Jordan. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everyone else is active. Every everyone else that's a Nike guy is active. LeBron, Paul George. You know what I'm saying? Um, Giannis, like all those. So it's, it was still Kobe and Jordan. Those two guys were, were the only ones having their retros. Barkley, to a certain extent, he still has his retros every now and again. But, you know, there's still a... The there classic was still bangers a, we're getting through, yeah, but yeah, for the most part. But, there, but for the most part, it's Jordan. It was Jordan and Kobe. <laughs> and and I still think that, yes, uh, I, I, I think that with the exception of Michael Jordan, and we're always going to say this, it, none of those Nike guys have sneakers that people are using as lifestyle sneakers. So uh, unfortunately, it, a Kobe, a LeBron sneaker, they're if you're they're for hooping, they're for right. basketball. Yeah. So I think you know what we'll see a lot of is yeah yeah those those Kobe's were sitting. Yes, unfortunately, you, you know I like I said I remember going to the foot action, foot locker, seeing Pro was just sitting until his untimely death but for this guy to say yeah that kobe was gonna leave i just i think it's in poor taste to me i feel like it's just like a yeah it's like uh you know it's it's a ploy for them to get 
some fucking marketing whatever his company is, whatever. And I, and I think that, you know, we need to uh, kind of take it for what it is, a grain of salt, because we don't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And I think we just no. need to, I mean, what needs to happen right now, because, you know, obviously Kobe and Nike still have some, you know, Vanessa still have some type of partnership is we just need to see in 2021 more Kobe's being produced so people can actually get them that I truly want them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say, too, because ba- just jumping off of what, you know, the whole conversation, what you just said, Al, about like companies trying to capitalize. Um, rest in peace, MF Doom. I can't w- imagine how many Doom masks are going to sell this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, man. Even just yeah. for people to hang them on the wall. You know what I mean? Like MF Doom was such a weird style icon because mm-hmm. he was like one of the arguably the first black nerd rapper. Mm-hmm. Yeah up there for sure and he also had such a unique style Mm -hmm. and in rapping and in clothing that i remember because and then also one of the most iconic dunks yes just because not that dunk was just so random maybe because i got hit late with it like that whole thing i was just like mf doom got a dunk i saw it on foot for the first time i didn't see it on the blogs i think um yeah just like all the pillars are going. Twenty twenty snuck another one in on us with him, man. That that one, like, yeah, that one was really hard. Oof. I'll I'll say this. Um, I have a, a personal story about MF. I actually just texted you guys a picture of me and my MF Dooms. Uh, oh shit! Uh, back in back in two thousand eight. Wow. I um. Well, that's I gonna. Fucking... Th- this is the uh, podcast cover now. <laughs> It's the <laughs> that's the, uh, that, the the cover of the episode. No, I I, I was um, I just remember being excited for uh, the MF Doom dunks, uh, and I think it was it was like July uh, or August of t- uh, two thousand seven, and I can remember waiting online overnight for a pair of these in Rochester. Um, I finally get there, skate shop, you know, I'm a size 12. He's like, we don't have a 12. He's, we never, we didn't get a 12 in the allotment. We got 11 and a half, we wanted 11 and a half. And I was like, fuck it. I took the 11 and a half and I, I wore them. And when I got back to New York and uh, back to New York City in 2011, I st- you know, I used to wear my dunks all the time. I used to wear my MF Dunes, Hawaii's, uh, Mork and Mendy's. I would wear all these shits. And I remember there was a comic that I was like really good friends with. And he asked me, he he loved them so much and i remember i was like you know Lawrence, or he, he asked me if he could have them and normally i don't give my sneakers to anyone but you know i you know he was like i don't have any sneakers you know i really want to and i gave them to him and i and looking back on it you know i was like yeah i did a nice thing but i was like fuck i, I wish i didn't because i gave away a lot of a few of my sneakers to people yeah. and um because we had a falling out you know you, you just learn that you know people aren't really your friends and um and I kind of just wish I got mad at myself for giving them out. And even though, you know, if they were a size 12, I think I wouldn't have, but I, the, the moral of the story here is like, if anyone asks you for sneakers, like tell them to suck your dick basically. And, <laughs> and like, yeah, I'm not giving you shit. Um, because I, I look back and I'm like upset at myself for giving away those sneakers and the Mork and Mindy's and the Hawaii's. And we saw, and, and as we saw in 2020, we saw a resurgence with dunks in 2019, 2020. And we saw, uh, was there, uh, Kylie Jenner wear these. Yeah. yeah. Which already shot the value up on the secondary market. But, um, and now with his death, just like, you know, Kobe's death and, you know, and other, and the price on these are insane. So they're they're up 83% from the Kylie Jenner spike, which was already at like two grand. I it's so you can see a consistent like four hundred price tag, Mm -hmm. which even back in like now we're going back to like like 2013, some of these stats. That's Mm -hmm. very fair for what that shoe was at the time and the resale price. Right. Mm -hmm. This was a grail before grails were grailing. Yeah. Like the weird culture that MF Doom had around him for him to get a dunk. And then it's like it's similarly to what the Grateful Deadheads were doing, like when the 
Th- those dunks came out. You know what I mean? But this was mm-hmm. before hype, drip, flex culture. I hate that. I just said that. I Before all this was what it is, like when Hypebeast had the old logo and actually told you things you could buy, like mm-hmm. th- that was a high resale and a very respected shoe. And that, like this has just gotten out of hand. Yeah. Well, also, it's just like they're just never going to make another pair of these, man. Never. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Never, mm-hmm. ever, ever. <sighs> Rest in peace, MF Doom. Um, you know, damn, it's just, it, they really snuck in another one. That, that shit was crazy. Yeah, when we found out, because he found we found out at, at New Year's Eve, basically, right? Yeah. We found out on New Year's Eve, yep. We found out on New off. Year's Eve that he passed away in October. Mm-hmm. His wife kept it a secret from us all because she wanted us to have a good rest of the year and then said, hey, by the way, <laughs> this happened. Yeah, um, they're like they're like trying to petition. Uh, and by petition, I mean, we're just going to make this like a street holiday that uh, October 31st is MF Doom Day. Mm-hmm. Okay, October 30th. 30, yeah, 30th. It was so, like something towards the end of October, if I, I don't remember the date correctly. Yeah. But like uh, mm-hmm. that, that Doom, do, do you know how many MF Dooms are going to be Halloween? This next year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it uh, damn man, I just you know, I get mad at myself for it because I'm like, you know, but at the same time, you, you try to do something nice, and I still think about it because I'm like, I don't even fucking talk to that comic anymore. Yeah, like, <laughs> you got the good karma, it came out somewhere, yeah, it yeah. came out. I mean, yeah, but you know, it's like, damn, like you look back on on, on, no, on that era, dumb. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it isn't, it's pretty dumb, <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, at, at, at the same time, it's just you looking out for someone. But uh, you know, and it's funny. Like I, I, I gave a few sneakers to people throughout the years. Like you know, and and I'm talking about nine, ten years ago, and I and I still see them wearing those sneakers. So it's like I, I'm happy that some people made it. You know, like yeah. it, it helped. You know, I'm you know what I'm saying. But yeah, dude, I, that's one of those things. But rest, in, I think rest in peace, just to like a truly underrated rapper. Yes. Um, and, and it just goes to show you that, yeah, this no, you know, no one's invincible. We're all going to pass away. And it's like, what legacy and what mark do you just want to leave on the world? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Positive positivity, stay positive, test negative. You know, that's it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, going from here on a lighter note, um, st- talking about legacies, uh, you know, we've, I mentioned before, you know, Reebok's trying to sell. Yeah. Um, it's a legacy brand. It's an unarguable legacy brand. I mean, they haven't really done much correct in the past, like, 15 years. But, I mean, like, you're talking early 90s, late, you know, early 2000s. That era, Reebok was a contender for being the best brand. 89, I probably was, like, the the, the peak and then dwindled down slowly. But now Master P and Baron Davis are looking to possibly purchase this brand in the most unorthodox <laughs> put together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who knows, Yo, man? It could be like peanut butter and chocolate. It might end up being good together. Yo, I get Baron Davis because, like, he played basketball. and He wore, Re- I like, Master P wanting to buy Reebok is... <laughs> Kind of wild to me. I don't. Do you guys have thoughts on this? We don't need to stay on it long because there's not like really any news. This is more like a rumor than it is coming. anything. I tell you, I didn't see it coming. Not I don't one. think anybody saw this coming. L, what do you think? Yo, Master P is always uh, looking to invest and come up, and I I don't mind it. I mean, you know, I I don't mind Master P. Uh. You know, I don't mind it. P is fucking, he's a he's fucking rap legend. He's a fucking businessman, bro. Uh, Baron Davis is a little shocking, but I'm, you know, listen, I, I, I'm all for black guys fucking doing anything finan- business-wise, financially. So if they can get it together and, and, and acquire and Reebok, then fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> How are you more shocked at Baron Davis than Master P? Because Master P is like a, a fucking, he's a business guy, bro. He's like- yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you don't understand, bro. Like, like what was it? Uh, 
like no limit, bro. Like, yes. you understand what I'm saying? Like all, all that, like his, like his, the like him being independent, like the way he, he kind of broke into, you know what I'm saying? Like it, 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 it was very smart in a time that not many, like, you know, everyone wanted to go like on a major, bro. So uh, you go on a major label and P is doing this shit out the trunk of his car. Like that's some business sense, bro. Even P like fucking, you know, um, with the NBA, like him trying to play, like all these business yeah. ventures that he's done throughout the, over the last, you know, 30 years, bro. And it, it, so I'm not shocked with that. I am more shocked at Baron Davis, but I'm, I, like I said, I love to see, you know, Baron Davis was an NBA all-star. He was a solid player. Uh, he's made a lot of money throughout the course of his career. Most so recently to, featured in the Sneakerheads TV show. That There you go. I mean, Jesus Christ, I don't know if that's an accomplishment. Or <laughs> yeah, was, I forgot about that. Oh, my God. I didn't forget. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is not an accomplishment. No. <laughs> but it's a credit. <laughs> okay, Luke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a credit. <laughs> yeah, he, he's all him and Lawrence are both going to be at Montreal next year. You're right. <laughs> See if we get the vaccine and in, in time for everyone to get it so we can fucking yeah. go to Montreal. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> no, I, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm excited for that, man. And hopefully, you know, the I mean, Chris, you're you're a big Bach boy. I am. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I hope that, you know, this is everything you've ever envisioned and wanted in your life. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Baron Davis wearing some Sean Kemp's is exactly my <laughs> my vision I've always wanted. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know how it's it's really not that hard. We're like, we see it work with Nike, not so much Adidas, but the retro business is the main business. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Reebok has just as many good. Re- well, actually, hold on. I'll take that back. Reebok has arguably a good amount of retros that they could just crank out, give to everybody and have steady sales. Like this whole shit where they tried to make it like a CrossFit Tough Mudder brand tanked the whole shit. They stopped embracing um, pump culture, I guess. (laughs) Hey, yo. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, If they just embraced pump culture, they'd be fine. Yeah. I need. Mm-hmm. I, I think we need Chris in a boardroom meeting with the with the owners of Reebok right now. Me, Master P, Baron Davis, and Allen Iverson. All are okay. Actually, you know what, Lawrence, you're right. This is my dream. <laughs> this is my dream. That's what I'm saying, yeah. if I could get Master P, Baron Davis, and Allen Iverson in a room just to hear my ideas, I'd be the happiest person that ever existed. <laughs> we gotta do more pumps. Pause. Pumps. Pause. We have to pump. Pause. <laughs> Pump the pumps, dog. Pump. It, it, it just pump it up. It's playing in the background. And Joe, <laughs> Joe Budden has to be there, Lawrence. It has to be me and Joe Budden. We get in a meeting. We talk to each other like, all right, where do you think we should take Reebok? And then we present <laughs> while Pump It Up is playing. And then what was that other pump song? All the kids were pumped up. Kick. That has to be there. That band has to be in the corner Foster for no the reason. People, the, the, the white kids in the corner. <laughs> yeah, they're just there for no reason. <laughs> By the way, that song is about a school shooter. You know that, right? Look, Doug, we're pumping up kicks and we're pumping up hard. <laughs> Pumped up kicks in the corner. Sorry. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Yo, Lawrence. He's upset with you. Uh, I'm not upset. I'm just, I'm just not shocked. You know? <laughs> I know, I know I went too far and when I see Lawrence's face just going like, I'm just going to wait till it's over. He's, he always looks down and goes, I'll just wait. <laughs> we, need, we need to ask all of our listeners and fucking the Discord, what's, what's Chris's approval rating? Like, on the, like people, what's people's approval rating of Chris? Like, out of all three of us, like... <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, actually, you can kind of do that. On the Discord, you can pick your own role to say which host you like the most. Mine's Hyenas, yours is Old Head, and Luke's is French Guys. Yeah, French guy. So anyone that picks that role means that you like that person arguably the best. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We need to we need to do that. We need to see if we can get approval rating, you know what I'm saying, right now for, for our hosts. So for the <laughs> listeners out there, let us know. Let us know who you like, who you want to hang out with. Um, you know, if it's us. bad, just let Lawrence and Luke know. But if it's good, just tell me. That's it. Just tell Chris. <laughs> 
Um, Chris, you're a designer. You're I fucking, you, and and uh, this is more your world. But actually, this is a world for all of us in fashion. And that uh, what the 2021 Pantone colors uh, yes. have been revealed. Universal gray and illumination. Mm-hmm. I believe. What what does this mean? Um, this means, Chris. yeah, this basically means that Pantone, which is the universal color picking system and not to, to design nerd out. Um, but every screen is like considered different. Like people have like settings that they could change on their shit. So like every color is going to read different on every screen. So Pantone is the universal system where they go, all right, you picked this Pantone. Well, that's the color. So everybody can not have a different color shit. So it's like how like number zero 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 is black, like that. Are they the guys who decide that? You're. I think you're talking about hex colors. Okay. Yeah. Which he- hex colors are is Pantone uses hex colors. Pantone mm-hmm. uses everything. It's it's literally the universal system of picking colors. Okay. Um. So you can give Pantone a hex color, like you're saying, and they'll give you a Pantone in which then you could tell a factory, I it, this is the color to use. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, got you. Mm-hmm. Um, so what every year Pantone picks a color or two colors in this instance where they say this is the colors of the year. Basically, uh, they kind of based on I don't want to say like trends, but like they do sort of like try to help mold the future of what colors to use. Uh So this year they picked a gray and a yellow. So the images you're seeing on screen for those watching uh, on YouTube, uh, I guess, is like what they're like applications of the color. I'm not exactly sure because they kind of look different everywhere. But, um, yeah, I mean, every year they just do that. That's weird. Okay. A little ballsy on them to just call a, cl- a color at the beginning of the year and say that's color of the year. We can't do that with sneakers. We can't just be like replacement dunks by Warren Lotus. Those are, <laughs> those are the shoe of the year. Can't do that. <laughs> we should, you know, we should start doing that. And I think you just it. did it. <laughs> I did. You just fucking did it, Luke. <laughs> Look at me. No, I, it does sort of help, like, well, it helps collabs, one, because, like, you could do a Pantone collab, right, and you already know what the color it's going to be. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that could be, like, a cons- consecutive series. Um, but it also does help, like, at least in, in, for me, like, my instance, I'm going, like, okay, so yellow is going to be a hot color. Gray is going to be a hot color. If, I mean, gray is a hot color. is kind of weird. I think that's why they did two. Because also yellow is kind of like a strong color to just like blatantly use everywhere. Back to like my mm-hmm. banana shoe kind of comments. But it does help me go like, all right, let me see what I can do with yellow. You know what I mean? It helps me go in a direction personally. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Basically, that's it, I guess. Cool. So if you if you create a collab, Chris, with other brands or whatever you do, then that yellow is a, is a good chance it may be used, or it's because of it's. Of because of the it's the color of the year type shit or no? Yeah, like I'll I'll pull like I'll pull it up. I'll be like, oh, let me see, let me check out what's good with that yellow. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that that also leads you to th- like other brands are going to use it. Other companies are going to try to use that for whatever. Re- you know what I mean? So like it kind of sets like a tone for the year, just like aesthetically, color wise. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when you found this news out, did you change the color of your room to that yellow? <laughs> no, there is video evidence of my. <laughs> <laughs> Back room. <laughs> Luke, you fucking suck. You I'm, just, I'm just asking questions here, man. <laughs> no, but right. I might change it to the universal gray to switch it up, you know? Yeah. You could. You could. I've got the gray background. I think they listen. <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> so does L. From us again. <laughs> wow. You are <laughs> Pantone stole the colors of the year from our backdrops in our rooms. Yes. From our backdrops in our rooms. Tracy's living room, your bedroom, and my bedroom. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Um, they take that very serious, though. When I when I've done, oh, I know. Yeah, yo, I've had to sign crazy NDAs, not letting people know I knew what the thing was. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. great. Like, like, yeah, because mm-hmm. no, yeah, go, go, go. No, 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 I was gonna say, no. Go ahead, you go, Chris. Yeah, just because like I, they really do like set that they lock that up. They think that this is gonna help move the whole year you know what i mean and them mm-hmm. being like literally the universal coloring system for everybody to use like it's a huge deal mm-hmm. i know tracy was telling me that they have like lipstick 
you know, they like they design like lipstick and makeup and shit like that to to fit uh, the 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 Pantone colors and shit like that. So it's like it's deep, you know, it's deeper than you know you. And like you said, it it's known and 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 it's like done to drive shit, bro. Yeah, it's done to drive shit in twenty twenty one. So basically, they have almost like a supreme type business with accessories. Like mm-hmm. you put Pantone on anything with a with a color, and it's they also name every color. So every mm-hmm. hex code you can think of, like yeah. Luke, going back to your reference, yeah. like every lab color, there's a they someone has named all that shit. Okay, I'm trying to think of a funny color name that I have to yell at them about. Oh, I have a I have a favorite color that I that I think is very funny because okay. there's a navy, the Yankee uh-huh. Navy. Yes. Um, which I believe is Pantone 289C. You nerd. You fucking nerd. <laughs> its name is Pageant Blue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so every time I use it, I just like to think of every Yankee player in a beauty pageant. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas a bunch of guys going, fuck out of here. <laughs> Never forget, but forget about it. <laughs> and there's like, oh, this guy's this guy's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh okay so silly that, uh i i wonder if that helped my approval rating it might have <laughs> it probably didn't um oh i think we're kind of close to the dismount here um there luke too. i do want to um bring up just because it so conveniently translates from last week's episode of your gucci doramon podcast yeah, well, yeah, this is like this is kind of huge. Yeah, on, your merch dropped. Part. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> for the listeners who weren't in last week, I was talking heavily about the the Doraemon uh, collaboration with Nike, and uh, and then we were talking about how Gucci's basically going to start their own podcast, and I was going to be the head of it, and <laughs> I'm going to leave this podcast behind. And uh, boom, what did you know? Gucci was like, "Hey, Luke, we hear you." We really want you on this podcast. So we made a bunch of anime merch for you. <laughs> and boy, am I happy to see it because none of it is that great. I got to be honest with you. It's pretty lame. <laughs> yeah, these things. Look at this. This is I'm not going to say it's unwell wearable, but OK, let's let me talk to the Gucci agent real quick. <laughs> Man, you make this less garbage. For those, no, again, a YouTube audience, you know, you should just watch us on YouTube because the, really the visual bits we're doing are pretty great. Uh, just Luke just asked the Gucci uh, online customer service to make the, the Doramon Gucci collab less garbage. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was very funny. Thank you for uh, for for indulging me in that, boys. Uh, oh. It's been a lot of fun doing this podcast with you, but you know. Gucci's calling, and when Gucci calls, you got to layer up and take their call. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got to layer up and take the call. We're just going to make Lawrence's new nose piercing the third mic. I think that's appropriate. <laughs> Don't talk shit about the nose piercing. <laughs> For the listeners out there, yeah, I did, get, I did get my nose pierced. It's fucking, it's fucking 2021, a pandemic. Uh, why not? What's next? What's next? Oh, I love it. I yes. love it. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, I guess we could wrap that here. Unless you guys have any yeah. final thoughts. No, that's that's all from me. No, nah, I think uh, I think I'm Gucci, man. Oh, uh, damn! I use that. <laughs> yo, rest in peace, yo, for all you New York City listeners out there, yo. The fucking McDonald's on West Fourth closed, and if you've ever been to Manhattan on a drunk night. You drink and you party and you've been to that McDonald's. I've been there so many times after bad shows that I had uh, where I bombed and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to eat some McNuggets and then at the same time see it fight. Uh, one of the greatest uh, fights I think ever recorded went down. At, I don't know if you guys remember, but I think it was uh, a, a, a lesbian couple. They had gotten into a fight with one of the employees. And I think they they jumped over the counter and, and hit him and, and he fucking went shit yeah. on them. And um, 
you know, I've just seen, so, there's been so many memories and as, as stand-up comics in New York City, I think it's, everyone has been, that performs in that area or hangs out has, has been there at night. And uh, yeah, just rest in peace at McDonald's, you know? Yeah. Um, for the listeners, just so you have a more of a, more of a context, there's like six comedy rooms just in that like one little area. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it ranges from like, you know, there's one room that's kind of off on bleaker where like they kind of let anybody go up, up to the comedy cellar. So like when pre pandemic at any given night, there was probably all range of comic yeah. there. And then also like eating at that McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. Just eating at that McDonald's, the, the, you know, the, the, the drunk people that you would encounter there, you know, you would, you know, just going in that McDonald's, you could see a, a 23 year old chick just crying, you know, her shoes off because she's had a rough night, you know, the drunk girl squad, the the drunk dudes who are ready to fight, you know, the workers who are ready to fight, like motherfuckers is like, you can't use the bathroom because they lock it off because they know, you know, bad things are gonna happen. And, you know, it's just, it just goes to show you that, that with this pandemic that, you know, stuff that we took for granted in New York and when things reopen it's going to be a completely different New York City so rest yes. in peace that McDonald's yeah all right guys that's it follow us uh sub podcast NYC on Instagram uh at not that Cheney at LZD325 at Trevisus at uh three meanie our producer he's uh he's going to be in and out you know when I mean? we're figuring out the schedule but that's it guys uh we'll talk to you next week and until then uh what did I say earlier? Uh, stay positive, test negative. <laughs> All right, peace.